A Daily Walk with Pastor in the Bible, Friday, September 18th, Psalm 118. O give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, and His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is on my side as my helper. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. All nations surround me. In the name of the Lord I cut them off. They surround me, surround me on every side. In the name of the Lord I cut them off. They surround me like bees. They went out like a fire among thorns. In the name of the Lord I cut them off. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Glad songs of salvation are in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord exalts. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has disciplined me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I might enter through them, and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me, and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We will bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Bind the festal sacrifice with cords up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his steadfast love endures forever. The Old Testament reading is from Nehemiah, the first chapter. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah. Now this happened in the month of Kislev, the twentieth year, as I was in Susa, the capital, that Hanani, one of my brothers, came with a certain man from Judea. And I asked them concerning the Jews who escaped, who had survived the exile, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, The remnant there in the province who have survived the exile is in great trouble and shame. The walls of Jerusalem are broken down, and the gates are destroyed by fire. As soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days, and continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And I said, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Let your ears be attentive and your eyes be open to hear the prayer of your servant, that I may pray before you night and day for the people of Israel, your servants, confessing the sins of the people of Israel, which we have sinned against you. 
even I and my father's house have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, and the rules that you commanded your servant Moses. Remember the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the peoples, but if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though your dispersed be under the furthest skies, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place that I have chosen to make my name dwell there. They are your servants and your people, whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. O Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight to fear your name. Give success to your servant today and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. Now I was the cupbearer to the king. In the month of Nisan, the twentieth year of the king Ataraxerxes, when the wine was before him, I took up the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had not been sad in his presence. And the king said to me, Why is your face sad, seeing you are not sick? This is nothing but sadness of the heart. Then I was very much afraid, and I said to the king, let the king live forever. Why should not my face be sad when the city, the place of my father's graves, lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? Then the king said to me, What are you requesting? So I prayed to the God of heaven, and I said to the king, If it please the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's graves, that I may rebuild it. And the king said to me, the queen sitting beside him, How long will you be gone, and when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me when I had given him a time. And I said to the king, If it pleases the king, let letters be given to me to the governors of the province beyond the river that they may let me pass through until I come to Judea. And a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the fortress of the temple and for the wall of the city and for the house that I shall occupy. And the king granted me what I asked, for the good hand of my God was upon me. Then I came to the governors of the province beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent with me officers of the army and horsemen. But when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite slave heard this, they were displeased greatly that someone had come to seek the welfare of the people of Israel. The New Testament reading is from 1 Timothy, the first chapter. Paul, an apostle of Christ, by command of God our Savior and Christ Jesus our hope. To Timothy, my true child in faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. As I urged you when I was going to Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge certain persons not to teach any different doctrine nor to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies which promote speculation rather than the stewardship from God that is by faith. The aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Certain persons, by swerving from these, have wandered away into vain discussions, desiring to be teachers of the law, without understanding either what they are saying or the things about which they make confident assertions. Now we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, understanding this, 
that the law is not laid down for the just, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the godless and sinners, for the unholy and profane, for those who strike their fathers and mothers, for murderers, the sexually immoral, men who practice homosexuality, enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine, in accordance with the glorious gospel of the blessed God, with which I have been entrusted. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service, though I formerly was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent. But I received mercy, because I was acting ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life to the king of ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory for ever and ever. Amen. This charge I entrust to you, Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies previously made about you, that by them you may wage the good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience. By rejecting this, some have shipwrecked their faith, among them Hymenius and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. A writing of Vincent of Laren. O Timothy, keep the deposit, shunning profane novelties of word and oppositions, of the knowledge of falsely so called, which some profess and have erred concerning the faith. After words such as these, is there any one of so hardness of front, such anvil-like impudence, such adamantine peritonacity, as not to succumb to so huge a mass, not to be crushed by so ponderous a weight, not to be shaken in pieces by such heavy blows, not to be annihilated, by such dreadful thunderbolts of divine eloquence? Shun profane novelty, he says, but he does not say, shun antiquity. But he plainly points to what ought to follow by the rule of contrary. If novelty is to be shunned, antiquity is to be held fast. If novelty is profane, antiquity is sacred. He adds, an opposition of science falsely so called. Falsely called, indeed, as applied to the doctrine of heretics, where ignorance is disguised under the name of knowledge, fog of sunshine, darkness of light. Vincent of Laren Trust in him with all my heart, now all my sorrows ceasing, his word abiding, peace impart, his blood from guilt releasing, free grace through him I now obtain, 
He washes me from every stain And pure I stand before Him The Lord be with you And also with you Let us pray. O God, our refuge and strength, the author of all godliness, hear the devoted prayers of your church, especially in times of persecution, and grant that what we ask in faith we may obtain. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, whose nature it is always to have mercy, visit with your fatherly correction all who have erred and gone astray from the truth of your holy word, and bring them to a true sense of their error, that they may receive and hold fast your unchangeable truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Luther's Morning Prayer I thank thee, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Or Luther's Evening Prayer I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.